Hello, it's Shuggling to 1000 and Pauline Fichuti, welcoming you back to more Pokemon Emerald. In the last episode, we went through on a wild goose chase in order to help us catch ourselves a wild Talo and a Maril, so that way it can help us out with our journey in this LP. And then, we happened to notice that my Ralts. Trico, Sigzagoon, and Talo all carry the Pokerus status. Maril is yet to pick it up. I was like thinking, how the heck did that happen? So I did some research, and I then realized the reasoning as to why that happened. The reason why it happened was because of Talo. Because I looked at my previous recordings, Shulk did not have Pokerus when we obtained him, Ralts didn't, and Sixagoon didn't, but Talo did. The reasoning of this is that a very rare chance, and this is actually much rarer than finding a shiny Pokemon, there is a rare chance that you can find a wild Pokemon with the Pokerus status. I am not joking. And Talo actually carried the Pokerus status when we grabbed him. And it passed it on to Ralts, Sigzagoon, and um, Trico when we, of course... We're trying to find a Maril. But anyway, this time, we are going inside the Petalburg Woods. Now, immediately at the Petalburg Woods, there is actually a, a certain a chance you can find, like, hidden items. Like this guy here. Sometimes there are things on the ground, even if you can't see them. That's why I'm always... That's why I always check where I'm walking. And this is basically an example. Here would commonly be known to actually have an item ball here because there's no grass anywhere. If you check it with A, there is a hidden potion. There are many hidden items to be found all around the region because it did that also in Heart Gold and Soul Silver and every other game past that. I don't know if it did it in Gold, Silver and Crystal. I want to say that it did in Gold, Silver and Crystal but I don't know for certain. And of course I'm trying to get used to the whole control mechanics because I'm still not used to actually recording my DS screen. If there was a way to actually record the laptop screen, that would make things a bit more easier. Right, so we got... Um, okay, that was weird. Hang on just one moment. I heard a ping. Ah, okay. Somebody on Discord. Right. I don't have the time to talk to somebody on Discord, so... Unfortunately, I'm going to have to ignore their message. In fact, speaking of which, I... Kind of weird actually get somebody to message me on Discord because usually I don't get anybody messaging me on Discord. Right, so here's a definition of a trainer class known as a bug catcher. Bug catchers in this game are commonly known to use nothing but bug type Pokemon. This became a recurring theme uh, from Generation 3 and onwards. Maybe so in Gen 2 also, but in Gen 2 there was no easy way of telling because of their sprites. 
So, I think it is safe to say it's easier to tell what class the trainers are in Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, and onwards. So, like, youngsters are commonly known to use normal types. Bug catchers are commonly known to use bug types. Um, the rich boys and the ladies, they, on the other hand, don't have an easy tell on which Pokemon they use. Because the lady we battled in the last episode used a Sigsagoon on her team, but they might actually use a different type Pokemon altogether. And wow, this guy's got nothing but Wurmples. Well, that's easy training for vaults. And in case if you um, didn't catch me saying what the Pokeverse does, um, when a Pokemon wins a battle, occasionally they will earn EVs, known as Effort Values. Those EVs are what's known to be helpful to you if you were doing competitive battles online. And the Pokeverse status is a rare status that might sound bad, but it's actually good. It basically doubles the effort values of somebody. I can double check that to be 100% sure. Let's see. Pokemon status. I put it down as PKRS because that's how you see it. Oh, wow. Very first thing it shows in my Word document search on um, Bing, weirdly enough is Pokemon Uranium, which is a ROM hack game that I actually do play. Right, so let's see. Um, I do apologize about this, everybody. I'm definitely not prepared, ever. So, in case you are wondering, the Pokemon status actually debuted in Generation 2. Not Generation 1. So... Okay, let me read here. Infection. When a Pokemon is infected with the Pokeverse, their status screen will display an icon indicating this special status. The same way status conditions would be noted. If the Pokemon becomes affected by the status conditions such as sleep, the Pokeverse icon will be... Um... Excuse me. The document just decided to randomly scroll down. Let's see, uh, the Pokemon's icon will be temporarily replaced until the status condition is cured. As long as the Pokemon is infected with the Pokemon, it can spread the virus to other Pokemon in the player's party. The Pokemon's may spread if an infected Pokemon is in the player's party after a battle. The Pokemon's may only spread to a Pokemon directly adjacent to an already infected Pokemon, but only if they have never had Pokeverse before. Eggs may catch the Pokeverse like any other Pokemon. Becoming Cured A Pokeverse infection only progresses towards cured status when the new day starts with the infected Pokemon in the party, or if the game is loaded, it is not the same day as it was when the game was saved. The number of days before a Pokemon will be cured for the Pokeverse can vary from 1 to 4 days. Once this time has passed, the Pokemon becomes cured and will be immune to the virus in the future. The Pokemon still gains double effort values when cured. Okay. So, I was right on the money on that. Hmm. Not a one to be found. Hello, have you seen any Pokemon called Shroomish around here? I really love that Pokemon. I was going to ambush you, but you had to dwaddle in Petterburg Woods. Forever, didn't you? I got sick of waiting, so here I am. You, Devon Researcher, hand over those papers. <coughs> yeah, you're a Pokemon trainer, aren't you? You gotta help me, please. Huh? What do you think you're doing? What? You're going to protect him. 
No one who crosses Team Aqua gets any mercy, not even a kid. Come on and battle with me. Well, wow, this is not a good start. That this is basically the um, <clears throat> evil team protagonist of this game, Team Aqua. They are known to be the main evil team protagonists in Pokemon Sapphire. If you were playing Pokemon Ruby, it would instead be Pokemon used by a team called Team Magma. But, you're probably thinking, are Team Aqua the main protagonist in Team em in Pokemon Emerald? The answer to that question is no. I know, it is spoiler alert, but you are going to be dealing with both Team Aqua and Team Magma, regardless in Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald. It's mainly Team Magma in Ruby, and it's mainly Team Aqua in Sapphire, but you still see the other protagonists regardless. I know I am spoiling the story a bit, but there's no easy way around it, honestly. Right, how? How do you like that? A move that actually raises the Pokemon's attack stat when its type is a special attacking type. Oh great, there's the sand attack. Here we go. Lowering my accuracy so I immediately miss next turn. And that still didn't KO. Alright, please don't miss Shulk. I said, please don't miss. Why is it every single time when I play a game where I have my accuracy dropped and I say, don't miss, you always miss? Even if I say miss, I don't care. You're still going to miss anyway. But anyway, there we go. Shulk is now level 9. No new move because I think he learned a new move at level 8. You're kidding me. You're tough! Grr, you've got some nerve meddling with Team Aqua. Come on and battle me again. I wish I could say that, but I'm out of Pokemon. And hey, we of Team Aqua are also after something in Rustboro. I'll let you go today. Whew, that was awfully close. Thanks to you, he didn't rob me of these important papers. I know, I'll give you a great ball as my thanks. If you were playing Ruby and Sapphire, I believe he would give you something known as an experience share. An experience share is basically an item that you can give to one of your Pokemon to hold, and at the end of every Pokemon that has been KO'd by your team, your Pokemon will receive 50% experience, even though... Um, <clears throat> It wasn't brought into battle at all. So, like, say, for example, you get 1,000 experience points for KOing a wild Pokemon. That Pokemon who KO'd the Pokemon, plus the Pokemon holding onto the experience share, will get 500 each. Didn't that team up with Thug say he was after something in Vospo, too? Uh oh, it's a crisis. I can't be wasting time. Apparently not. This guy here, yo there, your Pokemon doing okay? If your Pokemon are weak and you want to avoid battles, you should stay out of the tall grass. I think in Ruby and Sapphire he would actually teach you the mechanic of these ledges. If you want to avoid battles um, by, you know, going through the grass, you can jump over these ledges to completely avoid the grass entirely. And in um, Petalburg Woods, there is actually one Pokemon in particular that you can find in the wild that I want to give an honorary mention to. And no, it is not Shroomish. 
Yes, Shroomish is actually a Pokemon that can be found in this woods, but it's not who I'm on about. And I'm sorry I keep moving the camera because I don't have any solid way to hold these um, uh, cover, uh, game covers in place because they keep sliding around. But anyway, the honorary mention that I have to say about... Um, well, one particular Pokemon found in this woods, his name is Slackoff. Slackoff um, is a plain normal type. It's known to have Truons for the ability, which allows a Pokemon to move every other turn. So it's like one turn you get to move, second turn you sit around and do nothing. And it just rinses and repeats from there. When it evolves into Figure Off, it changes its ability to become Vital Spirit, which prevents the Pokemon from falling asleep. And then, there's one more evolution and he does pick up the Truant ability again. And there is a proper reason as to why. Because this Pokemon is a menace. If used in the correct way. His name is Slarking. The final of all form of Slack Off being Slarking. With Truon for the ability. Has formidable attack power. And is the only Pokemon whose base stats go beyond Legendary. Because as you know with Legendary Pokemon, they are commonly known to have a base stat total that reach a total of 600. Not Slack Off. Slack Off's base stat total reaches a total of 670. That is why we say it goes beyond Legendary stats. Because... Wait, what? Oh, pff, right. <laughs> I thought I was switching Pokemon because I looked away for a split second. But yeah, I can clarify this because Slarking was actually a Pokemon that we fought against when we were doing an LP of Pokemon Coliseum. So let's double check to make sure. Yes, I am right. His base stat total is 670. If you are wondering what his stats are, from lowest to highest, special defense, 65, special attack, 95, physical defense and speed, 100, HP, 150, physical attack, 160. You can tell why Chugga Conroy in his Pokemon Emerald LP used a Slarking in his team. Because there is one move in particular that you can get really late in the game that makes Slarking overpowered. Literally. And we will go over that at a later point. <clears throat> right, talking to this guy. I like filling my mouth with Z's, they sp then spitting them out fast. You can have this, so you try it out. Use it on a Pokemon and it will learn a move from firing Z's rapidly. Yep, talking to this guy will give you the TM-09 of Bullet Seed. Bullet Seed is a grass type move that uh, hits 2-5 to five times. It's only 10 power, but it is guaranteed to hit every time. Later on, though, its accuracy, I believe, was dropped to, I believe, 90% accuracy or something. I don't know. But the fact is, the move can hit either two to five times, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to hit five times every time because of it being 100% accurate. That's not it at all. What is it is that it has a chance... 
but he can still stop halfway through. And yeah, I really do hate being jumped on by Pokemon. Literally one step as I make it into the grass. There is a hidden Pokeball here. And a potion here. You might think that there are other hidden items up there, but trust me, there are not. And, oh, come on! Why do I keep getting jumped on by wild Pokemon all the time, and why is the um, camera not focusing? Literally. What is going on? Right. Freaking hell. Now you see what I mean about, like, why so many people hate being jumped on by wild Pokemon all the time. Uh, game, I'm holding left! Jeez! Good grief. If this is going to be like this the entire LP, I'm not going to be too impressed. And there's going to be future DS games coming out in the future that I'm going to be doing an LP on. Good heavens. But anyway, that calls it for this episode. Next time on Pokemon Emerald, we're going to be making our way to the end of this route to make it to the next town, which I believe is actually Wusborough City. See you guys then.